let's discuss about gear trains so when two or more gears are used or meshed in order to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft such an arrangement is called a gear train so the nature of gear train depends upon what is the velocity ratio required and also the relative position of the axis of the shaft now coming to classification of gear train depending upon the arrangement of the gears so you have four classifications here so you have a simple gear train a compound a reverted and an epicyclic gear train so we'll discuss each one of them one by one in a simple gear train as you can see so the power is transmitted being transmitted from one shaft to another shaft and you are using only one gear on a single shaft so each shaft can have only one gear not more than one so such an arrangement where the power is transmitted from one shaft to another using only one gear per shaft is called a simple gear arrangement here so the gear which is uh driving the first gear is driving the second gear as a result of which the first gear is called the driver and the second gear is called the driven or also called the follower and let's assume that the gear first gear okay which is uh, a smaller gear is usually called a pinion of the two so the first gear uh, let's say it is uh, having an rpm of n1 and the second gear is having an rpm of n2 so correspondingly the teeth on the first gear is capital t1 and the teeth on the second gear is uh, capital t2 and these two figures are also a simple gear train okay so here as you can see when the center distance between the two shafts increases you can transmit power from the first shaft to the last shaft using an intermediate shaft and by providing a gear on that also so such an arrangement can also be made so as you can see here the first gear is rotating in clockwise and the last gear is also the rotating in the clockwise direction so when you are using odd number of intermediate gears so the first gear as well as the last gear will rotate in the same direction so in the third figure here so you are using two intermediate shafts okay so here also when the uh, center distance is too large so we'll be using uh, more number of intermediate gears or intermediate shaft so here uh, we have provided even number of uh, intermediate gears and uh, you can see the direction of rotation of the first gear and the last gear so they are opposite in nature so what we can conclude is whenever we are using uh, odd number of intermediate gears so the direction of rotation of the driver and the driven will be in the same direction and whenever we are using the even number of intermediate gears the direction of rotation of the driver and the driven will be in opposite direction now coming to the speed ratio or the velocity ratio of such a gear train so the speed ratio which is also called velocity ratio is given by the speed of the driver divided by speed of the driven which is given which is equal to the ratio of the number of teeth on the driven divided by number of teeth on the driver so n1 by n2 will be equal to t2 by t1 and your train value is the reciprocal of your speed ratio your train value is the reciprocal of your speed ratio which is given by the output speed by the input speed okay which is equal to t1 by t2 now uh, talking about uh, the simple gear train as already mentioned when the center distance are too large and you have to transmit uh, the motion or the power from one shaft to another we are going to use an intermediate gear so in spite uh, instead of that we can also use a too large gear but uh, it works out to be uh, it's not economical when compared to using intermediate gears so it is preferred using an intermediate gear compared to using large size gears so when we are using an intermediate gear okay uh, let's consider the second figure here here this is the driver and this is the driven uh, uh, when we are considering only these two shafts 
and when we consider these two this becomes the driver and this becomes the driven uh, so corresponding if you try to write the uh, velocity ratio n1 by n2 will be equal to t2 by t1 and n2 by n3 will be equal to t3 by t2 and when if you want to find out the what is the speed ratio or the velocity ratio for this gate train arrangement so it can be written as shown here so you just have to multiply those things so n1 by n2 okay multiplied by n2 by n3 so which is equal to t2 by t1 multiplied by t3 by t2 so in the diagram the first gear was in mesh with gear 2 okay and uh, the gear 2 had meshed with gear 3 so that is why we have multiplied now so n2 n2 is common so you can strike out that so what is left out is n1 by n3 is equal to t3 by t1 here also the number of teeths on the intermediate gear can be cancelled out uh, this is uh, so you can see that the speed ratio n1 by n3 okay is equal to t3 by t1 now uh, in the same manner okay in the same manner if we write the equations for the third figure if we write the equation for this so n1 by n2 okay uh, what is the uh, speed ratio of this gear train so if we write down the speed ratio of this gear train but we have already written the speed ratio of this and also this so n1 by n2 is equal to uh, t2 by t1 and in this case n1 by n3 is equal to uh, t3 by t1 so nowhere in the speed ratio or the velocity ratio so the intermediate gear is coming into picture in that equation so so the speed ratio or the velocity ratio for a simple gear train is independent of the intermediate gears you can have any number of intermediate gears so that doesn't affect the speed ratio or the velocity ratio of the gear train or simple gear train so you can have one you can have two so that doesn't affect so the speed ratio is given by the speed of the driver divided by speed of the driven which is directly equal to number of teeth on the driven divided by number of teeth on the driver so your train value it is nothing but your inverse of your speed ratio now uh, as we have talked as we have already talked okay so these idler gears the intermediate gears are called idler gears so they don't affect the speed ratio or the train value uh, with respect to simple gear train so these idler gears or intermediate gears are used whenever the center distance is very large and uh, uh, the last gear to first gear if, uh, if you want the last gear to be rotated in a particular direction in such cases also uh, arrangements can be made uh, uh, by using idler gear so that you you can have uh, the exact rotation direction of rotation in which the output gear is required the compound gear trains so in a compound gear train so let us say you have to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft and you require a large amount of speed reduction and at the same time the distance between the two shafts is also large so in a simple gate train we used to use uh, intermediate uh, gate train okay intermediate or idler gears in order to uh, take care of the gap between the two shafts so in the compound gate train also if the center distance is too large and uh, you require a high amount of speed reduction in such care uh, in such cases we provide uh, on a single shaft more than a single gear so on the same shaft on a single shaft we will be using more than one gear and uh, such a uh, arrangement which is used in order to transmit power from the uh, initial gear to the final gear is called a compound gear train so uh, compound gear train schematically is uh, as shown in the figure so this is the first gear and the last gear okay uh, labeled as uh, uh, gear number 1 and gear number 6 so in order to uh, bridge the gap between these two shaft shaft a and shaft d so we are using two intermediate shaft on these intermediate shaft so two gears have been provided so the 
the first gear is in mesh with second gear and the second gear is and whatever uh, since they are on the same shaft so the gear 2 and gear 3 are on the same shaft so both of them will have the same direction of rotation as well as the uh, speed and the gear 3 is uh, meshing with gear 4 so okay so the direction of rotation uh, would be opposite and same gear 4 and gear 5 are on the same shaft C so they have the same direction and the same speed and the gear 5 is meshed with gear 6 so you can see here on the same shaft okay B as well as C there are two gears which are provided and uh, coming to uh, the speed ratio or the the velocity ratio of the compound gear train okay uh, so now uh, if you see this uh, if you try to write the equation for what is the velocity ratio between these two so n1 by n2 would be equal to t2 by t1 and uh, here n2 will be equal to n3 since they are on the same shaft and n3 is meshing with uh, sorry the gear 3 is meshing with gear 4 so n3 by n4 would be equal to t4 by t3 and uh, gear 4 and gear 5 are on the same shaft so they would have the same speed so n4 is equal to n5 the 5 is meshing with uh, gear 6 so we can write down n5 by n6 is equal to t6 by t5 so for finding the velocity ratio of this entire compound gate train so you just have to multiply all the equations so n1 by n2 into n3 by n4 okay into n5 by n6 which is as shown here n1 by n2 uh, into n3 by n4 into n5 by n6 so each of these are uh, the velocity ratios corresponding to uh, each of the shaft so between each of the shaft so in this case the power is transmitted from the first and the second shaft and here n3 by n4 the power is transmitted as you can see between uh, the second shaft and the third shaft and uh, this one the 5 and 6 the power is transmitted from the shaft number 3 and shaft number 6 so the and the corresponding uh, 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 ratios with respect to the teeth has been written so but we know na that uh, n2 is equal to n3 because they are on the same shaft similarly n4 is equal to n5 uh, again they are on the same shaft so you can cancel out these two uh, so what is left out is n1 by n6 the speed of the input gear and speed of the output gear and here we cannot cancel out uh, the uh, terms because they are uh, teeth okay so only the speeds are same but the the number of teeth okay on each of the gear would be different so the velocity ratio or the speed ratio n1 by n6 is given by uh, this equation as you can uh, notice so uh, n1 by n6 is the speed of the driver divided by speed of the driven which is equal to here t2 t4 t6 all these are the teeth on the driven gear uh, t1 t3 t5 all these are teeth on the driver gear so this is uh, between these two this is the driver this is the driven so between these two this is the driver this is the driven and in this case this is the driver and this is the driven so your speed ratio okay n1 by n6 uh, is given by uh, the ratio of number of teeth on the driven uh, product of number of teeth on the driven divided by product of number of teeth on the driver and here uh, as in the simple gear train okay as in the simple gear train the intermediate gears earlier in the simple gear train the intermediate gears had no effect okay on the velocity ratio but in a compound gear train they do have a effect on the velocity ratio so your train value is again the inverse of the speed ratio so coming to uh, a few more points on compound gear train so whenever a large speed reduction is required from the first shaft to the last shaft so it would be uh, preferable to use a compound gear train as compared to a simple gear train so if you are using a simple gear train for the same speed reduction okay you may have to use a very large uh, gear at the last and uh, whenever you have to have a speed reduction in excess of 7 is to 1 so it is better to use a compound gear train or a 
worm gear. Now, uh, coming to reverted gear train, uh, whenever you have to transmit power between two shafts and the two shafts are coaxial or in the same uh, or the axis of both the shafts are coaxial and uh, in order to transmit power between uh, such a shaft arrangement okay uh, reverted gear trains are used so the schematic diagram of a reverted gear train is as shown so here the power is transmitted from uh, gear 1 to gear uh, 1 to gear 4 or from uh, uh, this shaft to this shaft so here in order to and you can see that both are coaxial so you have to transmit power from here to here so if you are using a reverted gear train so you have a shaft over which you have two gears which are mounted so the power is transmitted from uh, gear 1 to gear 2 and uh, gear 2 and gear 3 are mounted on the same shaft they have the same uh, speed and gear 3 is in turn meshing with gear 4 and uh, if the shaft uh, let us say gear 1 rotates in clockwise direction so the gear 2 is anti-clockwise and the gear 4 again rotates in the same clockwise direction now uh, coming to the finding the velocity ratio of the reverted gear train so here uh, as you can see the between these uh, shafts okay so so the radius if you if we talk about the radius so the radius of the first gear plus radius of the second gear because uh, the distance between the shafts are same so r1 plus r2 should be equal to r3 plus r4 so that is the condition uh, for a reverted gear train because they have the same center distance so R1 plus R2 should be equal to R3 plus R4 now assuming that uh, all of them have the same module because in order for them to mesh properly they should have the same circular pitch or the module so considering that if they have the same module their uh, uh, pitch circle radius is directly proportional to the number of teeth so this equation can be written as uh, uh, T1 plus T2 is equal to T3 plus T4 and now uh, with this okay now coming to your uh, velocity ratio so what is velocity ratio so going back to this so velocity ratio would be uh, with respect to these two shafts n1 by n2 is equal to t2 by t1 and similarly between these two n3 by n4 is equal to t3 by t4 okay uh, n3 by n4 is equal to t4 by t3 so you can write down that so multiplying uh, the velocity ratios okay and uh, so after simplifying so you can write down n1 by n2 uh, times uh, n3 by n4 so where you have n2 and n3 are common it gets cancelled out so what would be left out is n1 by n2 is equal to uh, t2 into t4 divided by t1 t3 so here also uh, <coughs> velocity ratio is the ratio of the speed of the driver to the speed of the driven so which is equal to the product of number of teeth on the driven to the number of teeth on the product of number of teeth on the driver so this is the driver so this becomes the driven so this is the driver and this becomes the driven and uh, applications of reverted gear train okay so it is used in the back gear of the lathe and it can also it's also used in uh, automotive transmissions so speed reducers and even in clocks where the minute and the hour hand okay are coaxial so these are the few applications of reverted gear train Now, coming to epicyclic gear trains, in an epicyclic gear train, the axis of the shaft over which the gears are mounted can move relative to a fixed axis. So, the schematic diagram of an epicyclic gear train is shown here. So, you, you can see that you have we have three uh, members. So, we have gear A, gear B, and uh, we have an arm. 
so the gear A and uh, the arm can uh, rotate about point O and this arm is connected to gear B about uh, point O2 and uh, so again uh, the gear A and gear B are also in mesh. Now if, if the arm is fixed, if you fix the arm, if the arm is fixed, so it behaves like a simple gear train. So both the, uh, when the gear A rotates in clockwise, the gear B will rotate in counterclockwise. If the gear A is fixed, if the gear A is fixed, and by uh, rotating the arm C, by rotating the arm C, uh, by default, the B has to rotate around arm A. So this is the arrangement of epicyclic gear train. So now uh, the purpose of using epicyclic gear train is to transmit very high velocity ratios by using uh, a compact uh, size of the gear in a lesser space. So a few applications of uh, epicyclic gear train would be in back gear of the lathe, so differential gear of an automobile, so pulley blocks, wrist watches. Now for finding the velocity ratio of an epicyclic gear train, we have uh, two methods, one is a tabular method and one is a analytical method. So for earlier uh, uh, gear trains, it may be simple, compound or uh, reverted, okay, for finding the velocity ratio was much more simple. So in this case, it's slightly uh, different. So for finding uh, the velocity ratio, okay, we have two methods, one is tabla method and one is a analytical method. So we'll see uh, uh, how to find out the velocity ratio of a gear train in tabular method. So you have gear A and gear B and you have an arm. So initially, uh, we'll assume that, it's assumed that, uh, moreover, in this entire arrangement, we have three elements. One is the gear A, the arm, and the gear B. So that will be written down in the form of a table. So that will be written in the form of a table. So the elements what we have is arm, gear, A, and gear B. And once they are written in the form of a table, okay, the first thing that uh, will be done is, we'll assume that the arm is fixed, we'll assume that the arm is fixed, and we'll give one rotation to gear A. When the arm is fixed, both of them behave like a simple gear train, and when you rotate gear A by one rotation, and the gear B will rotate by TB by TA times okay, TB by TA times uh, gear A. So that is because NA by NB is equal to uh, TB by TA. So based on that, so the velocity uh, of uh, NB is equal to, okay, so based on that, uh, you can write down what is the velocity of uh, uh, NB. NB is equal to TA by TB into NA. So if you rotate this by one uh, rotation, this will rotate by uh, mm, TB by TA times. Okay, so that is written in the first column. So if you rotate gear A uh, by uh, one rotation, okay, in the clockwise direction, so the gear B will rotate in anti-clockwise. Okay, so so arm is fixed, the first condition. So you'll put zero here. So since the arm is fixed, so you'll give one rotation to gear A. So the gear B, uh, okay, uh, gear B, so will rotate by TA by TB times. It's a simple gear train, okay? So the gear uh, uh, B will rotate by TB by TB times in anti-clockwise direction, negative sign, because it rotates in anti-clockwise direction. Now the second condition, okay, uh, it's the same condition, this, uh, the arm would be fixed. So the arm is fixed, you are going to rotate this by one rotation. So this will rotate in the opposite direction. Um, now, if, uh, if you rotate the gear A uh, x times, okay, so the gear B also uh, will proportionally rotate, uh, okay, so TA by TB into x times. So that is written in the second column. So the arm being fixed 
and the gear A rotates uh, through X revolution. So in this case also the arm you have fixed so you'll give uh, X rotation so plus X so the gear B will make uh, okay minus X uh, into TA by TB. So in the third uh, uh, row so what we'll do is now we'll try to uh, give Y rotations to each of the elements in this arrangement. So we have element A, element C and element B. So each of them independently will try to rotate them by uh, Y rotations. So that will be entered in row 3. So you'll be adding Y uh, rotations to each of the element. So plus Y for the arm, plus Y for the gear and plus Y for the uh, B independently. Now the resultant motion, so the resultant motion will be, you will try to add up along the column. So the total motion of the arm will be plus Y, the total motion of the gear A would be X plus Y and uh, the total motion of the gear B would be, you just have to add these two. So here also these two and here also these two. So the total motion of gear B is Y minus of X into TA by TV. So this is this is the total motion. Now, uh, to solve uh, any velocity uh, ratio, you know, to to obtain the velocity ratio, okay. So in uh, in epicyclic gear train, so one or two conditions will be specified. Okay, one or two conditions will be specified. So using those uh, condition using those condition you can find out the what is the uh, velocity of uh, each of the element so this is the tabular method 